So Kakinen is pulled against Vancouver. McAniemi makes his first NHL start in Anaheim. Is Greer purposely holding still? Did EK65 really want to answer those questions from Linda Cohn? But we have more giveaways, so there's that. Oh, man. Hey, now, everybody. I got a big game on Tuesday, evidently. Hey, Ramon. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Ooh, Arizona, how you doing? Hey, welcome back to the unfiltered, unedited, uncensored, and commercial-free Sharks podcast that is the Pucknologist here on Teal Town USA. Uh, this time around, it's going to be relatively like we might get a tight 45 twice. We're not sure. <laughs> we do have another giveaway, though, but, you know, I'm just saying. Could be- I was going to say 45 what? Yeah, two type 45s, baby. (laughs) But first, if you're new to the podcast, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to follow us on social media, you can find the places to do that in the show notes on whatever podcast platform you're listening on us. Listening to us on? I don't know. I've English is still kind of difficult for me. Uh, Oh, boy. Keep us commercial free, though, using that super chat option during the live shows. Better yet, you can hit us up on Venmo. Want to say a special shout out over this last week to Jerry and Laurel, who uh, hit us up on our Venmo tip jar. Totally appreciate that, you guys, because remember that uh, we get 100% of that to put back into this to this little dog and pony show. So shouts out to to Laurel. Jerry and I and I feel like a schmuck because I feel like I'm missing somebody. I know there was one other John. That's the other one. It's John John. So, thank you guys so much for that. Um, but it yeah keeps us commercial free, so we don't have to hit the brakes in the middle of a fun discussion, so we can like tell you how to gamble or where to buy stamps or remind you to listen to a, another podcast. No one carries our water here, jerk. It's just us. Uh, I, I've heard that's good. I can't confirm though. Yeah, like for fans, by fans, we're not we're not working with any other networks. You know, we we are completely organic, baby. We are we could be sold at what Sprouts? <laughs> <laughs> sure, if that's your flavor. I'm more of a Trader Joe's guy. But hey, right. I'll, I'll do that too. <laughs> no free ads. <laughs> nice. All right, let's go. We got a really light week. Super light. Two games. Sharks pick up three or four points, and you have to be going, hey, trending in the right direction, right? <laughs> so, what is that, second win in the last 10 games? So we're off to the races, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, winning is always good, which is the obvious statement of the century. But you know what? The Specifically with the game against the Anaheim Ducks, you know, it kind of feels like the Sharks finally brought some of that excitement we were looking for. Excitement entertainment and hey intrigue how how bad would it have been had they lost to the worst team in the nhl <laughs> exactly and and you know i i would say at times the game against the canucks was exciting too Ooh. but a lot <laughs> of just a lot of times that were just really frustrating as well you know <sighs> what i mean oh you mean at like the end of every period when they let in a goal <laughs> right dude <laughs> Three of four periods, they let him goals in the final minute, and that's including the overtime. Are you kidding me? Uh, you guys know what happened if you're paying any attention. Kakanen got the start. He got yanked after two. To be honest, I would have yanked him after one. <laughs> I mean, I even have that in my notes from watching the game. I was just like, um, what was it? Hoglander trips LeBanc after neutral zone turnover, scores 94 seconds into the second. I would pull cock right here. <laughs> <laughs> I have, oh, dude, I have all sorts of notes, dude. The the Joshua, the one that Joshua tied it on, mm-hmm. oh, dude, that goal was softer than baby shit, softer <laughs> than light jazz, softer than inside voices. <laughs> I took that from a TikTok video. It's pretty funny. But the, I don't know. I mean, dude, you had the lead a couple times. You squander it. You should, this team just can't hold leads. It's unfortunate. Uh, Especially because lately they've been able to score goals. Dude, that's what I'm saying. 11 goals in two games? You're like, where the hell did this come from? (laughs) Right. Right? If only we didn't give up 12. 
<laughs> I shouldn't <laughs> if say only. Yeah, I shouldn't say that we, but the Sharks. Like, yeah, it's great when you score eleven until you give up twelve, and then who gives a shit? Uh, but even it, dude, even <laughs> Quinn after the game was just kind of like, "We playing? Oh, we playing D? We're not sure here." <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously we need all our lines to be better defensively. You can't be giving up the number of goals we've given up. And, you know, it's just, uh, I mean, you guys watch. I mean, we're in their zone, we're in their zone, they're going to score. You know? I mean, it's, it feels <laughs> like it happens way too easily for the other team. And, you know, our problems arise when, you know, our game is at times very indecisive. Are you on offense or you're on defense? And when those situations arise, we're assuming offense when you need to resume defense, you know, those flip pucks, you know, two of them were flip pucks and we're thinking we're going to get and go the other way instead of doing our jobs until we gain full possession. And, you know, that's something we got to keep working on. <laughs> have you, have you seen that movie with, uh, Will Ferrell and Chris Kattan night at the rocks? <laughs> yes. And they're both, you know, who, him, who, me, him, who, me, that's, that's to me, it's, it's like the sharks, whether they're going to play offense or defense. <laughs> You know, I'm listening to what David Quinn is saying, and, and I may have mentioned this point before, but it kind of feels like with these quotes that are kind of just very off the top rope, you know what I mean? And uh, it, it almost kind of feels like he's trying to weed out those who, who want to be here and those who don't want to be here. Do you know what I mean by that? Um, yeah, who doesn't want to be here? But do you know what I, you know what I mean? Like, oh... You don't like what we're doing here? Well, you know, we can send you somewhere else. Yeah, you there's, know? there's the door. Bye bye. <laughs> so, but just the fact that, you know, we're we're indecisive. We don't know where. Yeah, this this team, thirty games, still don't have an identity aside from they're indecisive, and a lot of stepping on their own. I mean, uh, shooting themselves in the foot. Hey, you know what? To their credit. Maybe they can't choose whether to play offense or defense, but at least to give them credit, at least they know that there's only two choices. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because if they because if they didn't know, then we'd really be in trouble. Man, are we having some buffering issues? Not that I know of. Oh, okay, I see somebody mentioning it, and I thought we were hardwired. So, uh, if we are, apologies for that. Pick us up on the uh, the audio version later. Reset your potato and try again. <laughs> yeah, take your uh, yeah, take your plate out of the nuker. Maybe that'll help. <laughs> uh, but aside from all of that, you know, giving <clears throat> up goals in the final minute of three of four and cocking and being awful and LeBanc and Cease getting stapled to the bench for stretches, uh, Quinn said, "Well, hey, I'm I'm still proud." Listen, I liked a lot about our game. I know, uh, you know we lost, but. I liked our resiliency. I liked. I thought we got better and better as the game went on. And you know, you're down three-one. We battle back, take the lead, take a penalty that I wish we hadn't have taken, and they get a bounce and had some chances in overtime. And you know, I mean, that team's been hot. They're a good hockey team. And you know, I just I liked a lot about our game. I'm proud of our guys, the way we competed, uh, coming off a road trip, and you know, playing the way we did. I was I was happy. I was proud of the way we competed. I mean, okay, I guess. That's what you wanted this season, right? You're proud of the compete. It was playing our brand of hockey. I mean, that's why, uh, what, Dolan and Balsas got shown the door, right? Not our brand of hockey. I, I You know. <laughs> Evidently, Balsas doesn't like to compete. It's just, it, it's so, I, I mean, to, to, to come out here, I mean, especially after some of the things he's said even last week, to come out and say, I like the way we compete. Like, are you sure? <laughs> like, you mean to like uh, score goals because you sure as shit aren't stopping them? No, but that's what I'm saying. Is like he says, you know, we like the way we compete, and it's like since yesterday's <laughs> game. Like, hey, we got our first shorty of the season. That's progress. Right. Progress. Oh, by the way, we also let in multiple goals when we were on the kill three times this week. After or, you know, three times this week, and we only played two games. <laughs> no, but three straight games. They let in multiple power play goals, and I'm kind of like, all right. That was the only thing they had going for them was the PK. Yeah, and now that – well, to be fair, though, the the power play has – because that's what happens with this team, right? One thing sure. gets better, something else gets worse. So power play gets better, PK <laughs> gets worse. Go ahead. I was just going to say I see one of our uh, 
one of our listeners making a mention <laughs> of how uh, Ely Tolvanen really likes to compete as well. And don't think we're not going to get into that. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I, again, I, I don't want to sit here and say that the Sharks had a shitty week because obviously, you know, they three were three or four points. Right, yeah, three or four points, and and you know, as you alluded to, the game against the Canucks, there were a lot of really stupid moments in that game, but the fact that the Sharks came back twice, right? I mean, that mm -hmm. to me that says a lot. You know, of course, they also, as you mentioned, let in a goal in the final minute of all four periods, and also squandered a lead late. Um, but you know, even in the loss, I thought there was a lot of exciting moments and a lot of good moments, and so, you know, I'm not. I don't mean to harp on Quinn if he's referring to this week, but if he's referring to the whole season, I think maybe somebody's got to listen to the comments just from like a week ago and, you know, <laughs> remember what was said. Well, maybe Chief is just like, well, I'm proud of Benino. <laughs> hey, three, you know, uh, we called him out and he's got three goals since we called him out. So I don't, I don't want to say that it's because of us. But <laughs> I'm not going to it say be. it's not. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, th the three stars in this though are quizzical. Pedersen, okay, fine, gets the you know the winner in OT, but Couture, sure, LeBay. How does Joshua? I mean, dude came like a uh, a hair away from a hat trick, <laughs> and was all up in people's faces. He doesn't even get a star. I was a little put off by that, but anyway. Um, eleven thousand four ninety two for the tickets sold. Tickets sold, uh, and we'll just leave it at that. Uh, we go down to SoCal and McAniemi, David Quinn liked what he saw from McAniemi in that period. And, uh, even though his numbers were kind of shit, you know, he was in one period in OT, he put a, he puts up a 789, right. And you're going, well, yeah, the whole team is shit in front. So what do you expect? But I guess he liked his composure and said, okay, we're going to give this kid, uh, his first NHL start and where better to do it than against the 32nd team in the NHL. I say, let him go. Versus Arizona this Tuesday and really help him build his confidence. <laughs> hey, why not, right? I mean, again, as we've talked about, I don't know how many times throughout the course of this season, like the Sharks are not playing these games to win. They're playing these games to be competitive, to be to but to not even to <laughs> change the culture. But they're 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 playing to they're not playing to win. They're playing to know who is going to help them win eventually, right? Mm. So again, point. to your point, like you think Mac, you know, I, I would, you know, I don't think anybody is delusional enough to think that Reimer is going to be here beyond March 3rd. So you want to see if McAniemi is an NHL goalie? <laughs> Run right. it. Why dude, not? Dude, let him go. Let, again, get it. It's not like you're going to be playing Boston on Tuesday. So put Mackie back out there against a bottom feeder team, get his confidence up, let him see what he can do. And it gives, because it, it's again, it's another short week this week. They, they're off three days, Arizona, then off three days, LA. Hey, give Reimer some extra time to like make sure he's more than healthy to come back. Yeah. I mean, especially as I mentioned, you know, Reimer is going to be, if everything goes according to plan, traded away at the trade deadline. The last thing the Sharks need is to bring him earlier than he's ready for. And then, boom, he gets injured and he can't move him. Yeah. And now, granted, March 3rd is three months from now. A lot can change. But uh, <laughs> we've also seen in the past where somebody will get jammed up with a innocuous injury that whoa. ruins everything. I know so, words. I know words. Hey, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The, uh, well, the, the game in Anaheim, let's, let's talk about where it all, what it all started with. And uh, let's just say this tilted... Some people one way and got them the other. Eric, you're on your way to another uh, Norris Trophy winning season. What's got into you? Where is this coming from? Well, it's always been there, I think. If you watch the game long enough, then uh, never really left me. You know, with the numbers you're putting up, there's a lot of chatter that you may not be finishing your season with the San Jose Sharks, maybe going to a Stanley Cup contender. What do you want to see happen, Eric? I mean... That's way above my pay grade. Uh, whatever happens, I'm a kind of day-to-day -day guy, and uh, you never know what's going to happen in the future. Uh, so I'm not planning for anything. Thanks for the time. Good luck. So when I originally posted that, you know, I, I used my my personal account, retweeted on top of it, and said, "Didn't sound like uh, 
a ringing endorsement for being in San Jose. Never, you know, no kind of, you know, hey, I love it here and blah, and that's just noise and blah, 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 blah. It was very noncommittal anyway. Then the other people were like, oh, this guy, he's probably so tired of answering these questions. And I'm like, solid point. And then there's other people that said, eh, it's, you know, it's just clickbait, more clickbait Carlson BS. But uh, dude, can we take this one at a time here? You know, uh, hold on. <laughs> Let, let's just take this one at a time. Eric, you're on your way to another uh, Norris Trophy winning season. What's got into you? Where is this coming from? Okay. <laughs> What's got into you? Where is this coming from? First off, that that's, I'm sorry. I don't think that that's a very uh, good question to start with. Like, what's got it? Why are you suddenly playing well? I, I loved his answer. I'll tell you that. Well, that's okay. Let's hear it. It's always been there, I think. If you watch. It's always been there? Have, have you looked at your stats the last three years? Okay. I mean, you can make that argument. Sure. But, I mean, at what point does it just, like, at what point are people just looking for something to talk about? Oh, that's all they've been doing. <laughs> this no, I know. He's but on this fire. What, Trade him. No, but this is what I'm saying is, you know, we've had to talk about this. And, and again, if you if you're wondering the three teams that you mentioned, if you're wondering which team I'm a part of, you'll know right here. I think it's honestly, I think it's obnoxious that we've had to talk about this three weeks in a row because every fucking rights holder and media outlet and every buddy who's ever walked planet earth wants to have something to say <laughs> about a non-story like gotta it, generate it, it baby it's to no, but that's what i'm saying and, and obviously this podcast is about what happened with the sharks this week and obviously that's a thing that happened mm -hmm. but it's just like christ almighty like oh. it's just not it's not a story you know it's not a story like if he you know if he does want to be traded it does it make sense for him to come out and be like, yeah, I can't wait to get the fuck out of here because then <laughs> because all of the sharks leverage is gone. Oh, of course. And, you know? and we'll talk about that because my favorite story from this week was uh, some hyperbole about him going to Edmonton. I mean, I don't think anything is off the table, you know? Yeah, I just, I just want to see how, how you what's coming back, how you make that whole thing work. But anyway, uh what was some other fun stuff? Well, when it comes to this uh, Anaheim game, it was an ESPN Plus game. So if uh, Cone didn't piss you off, of course Hextall did. Uh, I started playing a drinking game. I invite you to try it yourselves whenever you're watching a game that Hextall is doing. Anytime she says that they are or that they did or that he can't or that he is, it's, it's always one of those. I counted eight before I tapped out. I couldn't have any more. <laughs> well, everybody's got a crutch. Uh, yes. D oh, dude. I've, how, how many times do, do I say, you know, or just I, yeah, curse words you, in general? <laughs> you know what, though? I, I, I do, and I... But I'm not paid to be a professional. No, and I think... I don't know. It's... Like, I've seen some people saying... Oh, I wish we could have Pierre Maguire back. Fuck and it's like that, you. Yeah, that's the literally one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. Like whatever, <sighs> like I, I don't know. I there's, I understand not liking certain commentators and liking other commentators more. I understand it, but you know the awesome thing about modern technology is that I would assume safely that a hundred percent of television sets come with volume control. <laughs> So just turn it down. Like, honestly, like, I know everybody was, you know, freaking out over Leah Hextall when she's not even really that bad. I, yeah, I don't think but she's that bad. She just, she has to, a couple me, crutches, but the, in, in a but couple. But again, who doesn't? In, yeah, but uh, a couple of inflections. I saw a whole bunch of people lose their, their shit because somebody put one off the pipe and she said, hits the iron. Hey, whatever, that's fine. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe that's, that's her that's, accent. Who knows? I was going to say, maybe that's how they pronounce it, where she's I don't from. Know. I just, who knows? I, you know, on, and, and again, maybe this, I don't know, maybe I just have a bad taste in my mouth, but like I was more, I don't even want to say I was really upset because ultimately I don't care. But the, the reaction that was more ugh for me was Linda Cohen. And, you know, yeah. I don't, and I don't, and, you know, again, people are doing their jobs and I don't want to flame anyone who's trying to do their job, but I've just, you know, ever since the whole nonsense, you know, her, the tell all with Evander Kane last year, I'm just like, 
I don't know. It just like oh, ever God, since so watching, fluff. like there was such a ball washing, and ever since watching that, I'm just I I can't. You know what I mean? And it's it I, has nothing to do. It has nothing to do with other than I just I wasn't a fan of the story, and then you know you just. I don't know, whatever. I, I I just don't get how TNT has just like come in out of nowhere and done so, so much better. Do, yeah, so well done. And it's like, you're ESP fucking in. How are you so bad at this? Like you used to do this. I was going to say that used to do it, but it's just, you know, it, it's my favorite I, I, part. My favorite part of this one is Meyer scored and like literally two seconds before Meyer scored, their microphones failed in the broadcast booth. Well, yeah, because I think, see, and that's another thing they've tried to implement, like the, oh, we're going to, you know, it's a stoppage. We're going to go to the, we're going to go to the studio and they're going to tell us something else, you know? And then again, not knowing your timing, you know, when you, oh, okay, I got 10 seconds to get this hit out. You know what I mean? <sighs> I like, don't know. I, I just, and it's, like ESPN, you said, ESPN, ESPN they've done this before, but it's so much, like, it, if you really want to just, like, really drill down, really, really get into the to the molecular structure of this whoa. whole thing. Whoa, hey, whoa. <laughs> you know, like, the games, for me anyway, as, you know, you are the same way as I am. We're a bit, a bit snobbish when it comes to audio. And, mm. you know, it's been almost two years and they've still not figured out a way to properly mix their audio. Yeah. And it doesn't. And it doesn't matter who's on the call. It, there could be nobody on the call. The audio is still bad. Yeah, you know? I don't understand. And then, and then you got those damn moving graphics on the boards that are just driving me crazy some days. Maybe it's just me. I, I I've t I've found uh, I've found out how to tune those out. Maybe it's just me. It, you know what? It uh, some ad when the goddamn Toyota truck is driving around the boards and there's a play in the corner. And That's annoying, yeah. Dude, that is so annoying. When they have that motion where, like, all of a sudden, a fuck, out of nowhere, a Jaeger bottle pops up. You're like, what the <laughs> hell? You know, when it, if it's just, like, static and they just switch from one to the other, doesn't bother me. But when they have that movement and then it's happening while the camera's moving, or my favorite is a goal will happen and you'll see somebody lift their arm and all of a sudden part of their arm disappears because the graphic gets laid over their arm you'd think that because <laughs> obviously when you know it's only it's only the hard cam that has the digital boards but any of their mm -hmm. you know any of their specific cameras you know in the corner or the overhead or anything like that they all are not doing the digital advertising you'd think that say okay pucks in the corner we're going to cut to the corner camera and then when we come back out to the hard cam different ad exactly i think it would just be seamless like that no, but it's because you buy the the way I understand it is you buy it in thirty second intervals. Sure, so, and you know, uh, I don't. Okay, we should probably start complaining about this. Um, <laughs> Stolarz replaced Gibson to start the third. It's weird. Post game reports mentioned illness as the reason. I thought he was suffering from a condition. Try you know, known as lets a lot of goals in. You know, there, there, you've seen it quite a bit where you'll have like super elite level players that whose reputations are completely ruined by being on a bad team. Ugh. And I think John Gibson is one of those. I, like I told Ian the other night, I'm like, how has he not pulled the rip cord? Like how is he trade me right fucking now? Yeah. I mean, again, like what, you know, and there was, con there's been, I think going back two years, there's been conversations. He's, you know, so John Gibson's from, Pittsburgh and there was conversations that he was going to go to Pittsburgh and I'm like that'd be cool hell yeah you know and there was conversation before they signed Jack Campbell there was conversations of the Oilers taking a sniff of course now Stuart Skinner, Skinner's ended up being the guy over there but like sort of with John Gibson like you know he's got the no trade clause so he does have a degree of control and it, it does handicap the Ducks ever so slightly but again it's a pretty pretty loosey-goosey no trade clause like he could easily facilitate something and you know from john gibson's perspective when you're a top five goalie in the league and you're putting up you know bottom 60 numbers like at what point do you just like you said at what point do you just say i gotta go somewhere where i'm gonna get some help you know oh absolutely i mean at this point we know who the bottom feeders are you know your mm -hmm. arizona's san jose chicago anaheim columbus although that one's a little bit of a head scratcher but either way we well, <laughs> really? <laughs> um, but even then, like, 
it's but my point is we know who who the uh the bad teams are right well, who who's the first to like pull the trigger on something big well i think you know going back to john gibson right the you know, you look at the Anaheim Ducks, right? You look at, I mean, they've been going through transition ever since the Sharks swept them, you know, all those years ago. But you look at, like, the, you know, Ryan Getzloff has retired. They traded away Lindholm and Manson and Raquel, you know, and, and uh, you know, they got, you know, Cam Fowler is signed, which I guess is good for them. But, like, for the most part, the old guard is gone. Like, even more of an incentive from Gibson's perspective to be like, you've traded everybody that made this team good. Do me next. Yeah, um, do me a solid and get me the hell out of here and have fun. Let uh, Zegras take over, build around him. I'm out. And and the Ducks are moving in the, direct, the right direction, but they're not close enough. We, we've talked about teams keeping players through a, real build, a rebuild. To me, the Ducks are not close enough to justify keeping John Gibson. Mm -hmm. And to go back to your initial question, who pulls the trigger first? I think it's Anaheim. I mean, you know, I think they've got so many guys that they can move away for pieces, you know, that they might as well. Again, they're worst in the division. They're worst in the NHL. Like, I, I think at a certain point, it's just going to say, yeah, we don't have anything going on. Like, at least with the Sharks. Like, yes, the Sharks are not making the playoffs and they're firmly out of the playoff picture, but they're still a degree of, oh man, well, if like a million things go right, maybe they stumble <laughs> their way back through. Like there's still that there. And yeah, why is there hope? I don't know. I, I just don't, I know you mentioned Columbus. I just don't see Columbus doing it because like Columbus feels closer to where they want to be than Anaheim does. Like, I don't know, like Columbus kind of already stripped off a bunch of pieces. I kind of feel like Columbus is coming out of the valley you know, and they kind of mm. just have to wait it out, so to speak. Yeah, I, it, Anaheim, it's, you know, it's time. I mean, Zegris is only 21. McTavish is only 19. And Troy Terry is, I think the veteran Troy Terry is like 23. <laughs> Two, 25. Oh, still. Yeah, it's uh, Com Comtois is 23. Dude, Troy Terry's younger than me, and I'm the young guy here. Like, <laughs> uh. You know what I mean? Dude, that's what I'm saying. So it's, you know, they're back in. Anaheim's back end is, that's, a you know, a little bit of a tire fire. Like, everybody's over 30. So, right. and good they, luck and, there. And for years, like, I I can't believe we've talked so much about Anaheim, but for years, they, their blue line was a, was a farm, right? And oh, it's, dude. and and it's gone completely the other direction now. Yeah. Where most, most of their defensemen, with the exception of Cam Fowler, most of their defensemen are guys that they bought, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, we welcome those of you that were paying attention to the Barracuda game who have beaten uh, somebody, Bakersfield. <laughs> the Bakersfield Condors, 3-1. to one. Uh, I mean, jerk. It's nice to see Bakersfield get their ass handed to them once in a while. We'll, yeah, we'll, Bakersfield we'll... sucks. <laughs> no disrespect if you live there. Like, but... <laughs> I was going to say, the city, like everything about it just... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, but goals... I... Goals tonight, just quickly, goals tonight from Tristan <laughs> Robbins, Scott Reedy, William Ekin. We'll talk a little bit more about Huge. that later in the show. Uh, let's move on. I mean, that was way too much about Anaheim. It was like a teal tinted glasses episode for a minute there. <laughs> Talking way too much about teams, not the Sharks. So, good. Hey, it's fine. No, sure. <laughs> it, again, only two games this week, and we've only been on for 30 minutes. I'm about ready to wrap it up. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Sharks scored their first empty netter for short, Shorty this week. They scored on the power play in four straight. They fought back to get leads. The bad news gave up two power play goals or more in three of the last five. They allowed goals in the final minutes of you know three or four periods against Vancouver. I, what happened to this PK? We don't know. They've allowed seven over three straight games. Now, when Reimer is healthy, Quinn has already said they're not going to carry three goalies. They'll obviously have to make a decision. And Quinn said Reimer is close. Probable. It, it sounded like or it, one of the writers, I'm not sure who, so no disrespect to whoever it was that uh, put this out, um, said that probable – like better than possible, le least than probable, but Reimer would go versus Arizona. Again, I go back to how do you not go back to McAniemi? 
Yeah, I like, agree. What what it's like. Quinn is quoted saying, we're not going to three, carry three goalies. Well, Quinn is also sa- quoted as saying, whoever stops the puck gets the start. Mac- McAniemi <laughs> only let one by. I say you roll. But, you know, wait till next Saturday against L.A. But if it's going to be Reimer and Kakinen going forward, I mean, come on. 8-2! I mean, uh, again, like we talked about earlier, like, the Sharks giving, and and we kind of saw it, uh, you go back to, that would have been the hub season, you know, where where Bob famously said, yeah, we're not going to start Jones. Uh, <laughs> you know, like the Sharks gave everybody a chance in net, right? And again, it goes back to, <laughs> it goes back to seeing what you have and guys, you know, okay, we, we got nothing to play for. Show us, show us what you're made of. Show us why we should keep you. And now I understand that, what I'm talking about, this is a April conversation, not a December conversation. Mm-hmm. But with the trade deadline being less than three months away, you know, this is I feel like once you get past Christmas and you get into January, that's sort of when the trade sniffing starts. And, you know, I got to get past game 41. Right. No, and I understand that. But I just think. Like, you know, they're not going to just carry three goalies. And obviously, obviously, Reimer is going to be the odd man out eventually. But the Sharks have nothing to play for. Why not make eventually now? <laughs> That's all I'm saying, <laughs> dude. Uh, question from the chat from Michael. Jerk, do you see Nieto as an important feature for the Sharks' future playoff appearance? I, uh, I see him as not. an important trade piece b- between now and the deadline. I was going to say, if by important feature you mean can be traded for something that will help the Sharks down the road, sure, absolutely. absolutely. But but at the end of the day, and and again, I know there's been a lot of Nieto slander from me the last however many weeks we've been doing this now, 10 Months. weeks, 11 weeks. and But the bottom line is, yes, Nieto's played very well lately, and that's fantastic for him, and I'm happy, right? But at the same time, he's a 30-year-old pending UFA winger on a team that is at minimum, like best case scenario, right? Mm-hmm. T- one to two years away from the playoffs. Yeah. Like it, it's just, it, even if the <laughs> sharks, even if the sharks didn't have as many prospects at the wing position that they do, I still don't be, see him being an important feature. Yeah. Um, back to the goalies though. I mean, Reimer has been hit and miss. Uh, he's, you know, 857, 976, 700, 923, 933. So hopefully he gets back healthy and can and have a run. Kakin in, everybody knows it's he's either on fire. It's like better than 970 or worse than 800. <laughs> and then Dell. Dell is another one. He, two starts with the Sharks, a 935 followed up by an 865. And then tonight he stops 39 of 40, granted, with the Barracuda, but still it's like up, down, up, down, and then Mac and Yemi. So look, whatever happens, gonna happen. <laughs> Mac and Yemi will go down. That'll be as soon as you see that Mac and Yemi has been sent down, that's when you know Reimer is ret to go. So uh I mean, and we've said this before. If the Sharks get really gave a shit about wins. We'd be seeing guys like Bordalo or Agazino, Eklund, Merkley getting called up, not Cease, not Harrington. Although Harrington got a goal this week, so fuck me. I feel like <laughs> I feel like Harrington, and I understand why, but Harrington and he's not some standout defenseman, so I don't want anybody to think that's what I'm trying to say. But guy has only played four games this year, and he's a plus. I know plus minus doesn't mean shit, but this team is bad. So I always just found it peculiar that Harrington is kind of getting lumped in with all the shitty defensemen we've seen this year. And it's like, (laughs) maybe eventually it gets there, but let's let it play out a little bit, you know? Okay. But I mean, my point being is that, you know, you'd see somebody that's, uh, has talent who's Mm, going to be, you know, you're not, you're not, (laughs) you're not starting a guy on Wednesday that you waved the day before, but here we are. I don't know. I still and and we've talked about it, but the way just between injuries and roster decisions the Sharks are making, right? It's just it's not feasible right now for the Sharks to call up 
anybody, even if, you know, even if Bordalo had 20 goals in 20 games, you know, it's just, there's just no space at this point in time. He but, doesn't? Right. But, but again, you look and we've kind of talked about it all along, but Benino and Nieto and oh. you know, Benino and Nieto are for sure going to be traded away in March 3rd. I mean, the, or earlier, I mean, those are two guys right there. Some conspiracy theorists will say Timo Meyer. I'm not totally convinced. Pierre um, LeBron says so. Yeah, but you know he doesn't watch the Sharks. Um, <laughs> just like Eric Carlson said, you've seen it all along if you watch the games. Uh, well, dude, but, Couture, yeah. have you watched this play? <laughs> right, and <laughs> so I just think you know I I know it's frustrating that like, and I'm frustrated too. Like I want Eklund and Bortolo and Tristan Robbins. Like I want these guys to be on the big club, but again, when there's no room for them. You're not doing them any favors. You know what I mean? You're better off just letting, you know, like you don't need them to push someone out of the lineup because eventually guys are just going to fall out just by virtue of trade deadline and all that kind of stuff. Well, let's put this question to the chat or if you're picking this up on replay um, and there's a comment area or just hit us up on Twitter with your with your answer. Who, who would you rather have right now? Svechnikov and Cease? Or bring back Marlowe and Thornton. <laughs> same price. <laughs> I think they might have about the same impact. So, like I knew mm. Jerk would, yeah, I knew Jerk wouldn't find that funny. He's like, "Fuck I, you, no, leave I, it alone I, already." No, I'm thinking. See, because here's the thing. Actually, you know, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get a rise out of me, but I think <laughs> you might. I think you might actually be onto something because, dude, if the sharks, let's just say for fun. If the Sharks bring back Marlowe and Thornton in some weird alternate reality, right? Mm -hmm. At least when the, and I'm not going to say anybody, but at least when the paid talking heads talk about these players like they're still on the team, they'll actually <laughs> be on the team. <laughs> Solid point. <laughs> in that case, let's bring back fucking Nabby and Pavelski and Burns. Let's get like, them all in there. <laughs> you know, what's I'm trying to think of somebody who like everybody somebody that everyone like got wet over but was not that great you know like what Dan is Dan Boyle <laughs> no I, I'm, I'm like what what's I don't know what's Mike Rathji doing you know like <laughs> absolutely nothing <laughs> Jeff Friesen what's he up to dude is this your favorite player <sighs> oh yeah dude Ray Whitney <laughs> um all right let's some quick numbers and we'll move on here. Uh, special teams over the last five games, like I said, power play, it's moved from 33% up from 21 a week Not ago, bad. right? So it's like nice increase. The power play, however, has gone from 73% down to 61. That's not good. And as uh, we've all been told, those percentages need to add up to over 100 in order to find su success. And for the last two weeks, they haven't. Uh, I think that kind of explains why they only have two, <laughs> you know, wins at home and two wins in their last ten. So, but through thirty games, the, what? What's? Am I missing? Well, well, I'm hope, just loving in the chat. People are bringing up obscure former Sharks players. Oh, no, oh, dude, Vinny Damfus, nice. Oh, why is Ian barking at me? What, who did I bring up? Did I bring Dan up like? Boyle. Oh, oh, dude, I love me some Dan Boyle. Uh, but anyway, um, dude, through thirty games, twenty three points. Right? But, right. Okay. But I, I tallied it up because we were talking about, oh, the, the, the differences between the, the offense and the defense. Dude, last season, they had 31 points. Not, you know, a little better than 23. Sure. But last season, I, I did the total at the, for the end of the years, like projected everything out. Uh, but over the first 30 games from this year, 93 goals for. Dude, that is a 15-goal increase from last year on a team that doesn't have Balsers or Dolan or Brent Burns. Like, you kind of have to sit there and go, okay, that's impressive. But you throw on the resurgence of Eric Carlson and, you know, Timo is shooting everything. So... Speaking of numbers, the Sharks taking, as you mentioned, taking three or four points this week. The Sharks are now on pace for 63 points to end the season. Oh, it's now it's up to 63. It was 59 last week. Yeah. Oh. So they uh, 
A little help there. But yeah, I mean, you know what? They're almost they're almost close to, to being, being close, almost close. Yeah. Right? They're close to being close. But last season, goals against through 30 games, 85. So last year, their goal differential was dash seven. Right now, they're 110 goals against. <laughs> in fact, I think they're tied for the worst in that. Hey, huge. <laughs> dash 17. Oh, uh, man. And if I remember correctly, that number gets significantly worse when you just say five on five. Like mm-hmm. it, the, the shit gets really bad really quick. Uh, let me see here. Goals four. Um, you know, they're not horrible. They're sixth in the league at five on five, but goals against number one at 76. T- well, Hell yeah. I, t- you tied with Anaheim. It's all oh, right where we need to be, right? Dude, this is right where we want them. So, yeah. I mean, keep it up, dude. That defense is going to back you up right into that number one uh, draft choice. Hey, now. All right. <laughs> Let's get to the heroes and zeros. Uh, you know, I started off this week thinking, you know what? EK's had a had a decent week. He had to deal with Linda Cohn, and he got through that. <laughs> 30 and a half versus Vancouver. He's got three points, goal, two assists. He's even. So I'm like, you know what? Maybe he'll be my, and then uh, put the brakes on that. Cause I, then I started looking up Matt Benning stat. And this is a guy that I've, you know, wasn't that thrilled with to start off the season, but you get into the numbers. Despite a couple stinkers since Thanksgiving, Benning has six assists in eight games. You know who also has six six apples in eight games? Eric Carlson. Like the only difference is Eric Carlson has one goal during that. Benning doesn't. And but during that same stretch, Benning's plus one, EK's a dash five, and Benning is second in time on ice during for games played during that stretch, just behind Eric Carlson. So Benning, you you're huge, my hero for this week. Nice. What you got? So I, I kind of alluded to it earlier, and this one's obviously an easy one. This is the, we talk about the sexy pick and the sleeper pick. This is by, by and far the sexy pick. It's Nick Benino. We The last two podcasts, <laughs> we have taken Nick Benino like he's a piece of paper and ripped him to shreds. Yep. And you know what? He's come and he's he's stuck it to us. You know, the three the last three games, one of them being last week's show when we took over after dark, the last three games, he's got three goals. So he's sticking it to us, which, again, we love. We love that. But again, I'm I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that maybe, you know, he's been ever since there's been some injuries and some inconsistencies. You know, he's been with Couture and Barabanov the last couple games. I think at this point you just leave that be, let him sneak, snatch up a bunch of goals, and as we talked about last week, boost that value. Mm-hmm. I support it. Yeah, you know, and Ian is saying, it, you know, Benning, he's got a good pass. That's it. That's fine. Well, but... dude, what did you think of his primary assist a week ago? <laughs> oh, dude, <laughs> chef's kiss. <laughs> no, my just my point being, it's like hey, you know, once I was diving into some numbers, it's like, hey, you know what? I mean, statistically. Dude's had a good couple of weeks since Thanksgiving. And, you know, look, for as much as we uh, rip things, it's nice to praise. So, well, and, and here's the thing, and we've made this point so many times before. When you go from brutal to just okay, that's an improvement. Yeah, dude, significantly in some <laughs> cases. <laughs> Depending on who you ask. Fucking A. <laughs> uh, boy. All right, let's get to the fun one, right? <laughs> As they're sitting there, go. We have to praise from time to time. Now it's time to rip somebody a new I'm asshole. Rip. Yeah. All right, dude. I I think at this point, uh, until like Oscar Limbaum scores a goal, uh, he's just going to be my in perpetuity, just my zero. Or I, I guess this week, since we're so close, it's who's naughty and who's nice. Well, Limbaum, you're naughty. Well, Limbaum got a goal. When last last week? Oh, pff, that was last week. Sure. Okay. <laughs> what fair, have you done fair, for fair, me fair. lately? Well, and not only that, but his his goal against Buffalo. It was against Buffalo. Against Buffalo. Tell me where it was in the module. 
it was a low value. Yeah, player. exactly. It's like, eh, you know, it was, oh, it's the Mahalik special. You know, you, you go for a while, <laughs> you don't score. Then when you finally do, it's it, it's meaningless. It's, the, right. it's in the last six minutes of a game where you're up five to one. So, okay, sure. But this week, Lindblom, stats over two games this week, no points. Dash one in two games that the Sharks scored 11 times. <laughs> one hit. One block, one giveaway, zero shots on goal. Versus Vancouver, there was only one other forward with zero shots on goal, and that was CJ Cease. And versus Anaheim, there was only one other Shark with zero shots on goal, which was Gadjevic. So I think what uh, the question that I am trying to ask here is this. What would you say you do here? Right? Absolutely. <laughs> I, and again, I, I've sort of been the contrarian to your point. Like I do, the talent is there, right? But at the end of the day, and we've talked about this so many times at the end of the day, the puck has to go in, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't matter if you have talent or not. If the puck's not going in, you're not helping. Dude. All right. So that's enough because if I feel like I'm going to have weeks and weeks of time to rip Lindblom until something happens. But hey, we've seen this happen before, right? We rip somebody in the uh, Hero Zero segment and then all of a sudden they go on a tear. So see who 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 needs to go on a tear for you? Uh who it, it's again, so last week uh it was my my zero was somebody. I don't know who the person was, but I know that it, they exist. So it's again this week. Same same thing. I don't know who it is, but I know they exist. Oh, uh, I remember this. Whoever, and again, it, it, it's it's multiple people have said this, but I, I sort of get the feeling that it's all coming from one place. Wait, many people are saying? Yes. Okay. Who, who? is the person that has crafted the narrative that Luke Cunning has been a big add to this team? <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't get that either. Like I've heard people, and again, I, this is not singling anybody who's buying the information because there's a bunch of people who are, but it's the person who has started everything. I've heard people talk about secondary scoring. He's got five goals. I've heard people talk about smart play when he's not scoring goals. He leads the team in PIMS. He's the worst plus minus forward. Right. Well, it, the and you said five goals. Didn't like two of them come in the first two games of the season? Well, two of them were in one game, and I'll tell you right now, two of them were in one game against the Canucks before the Thanksgiving break, and then the other one was in the first game of the season. <laughs> and the two, yeah, I was going to say, or the, the thir a, a third one rather, the one yeah. that he scored two goals in. If memory serves, didn't the Sharks like lose in overtime in that game? <laughs> yep. <laughs> ah. And and you know what? The one thing you know to to sort of put our own spin on it, you know, to try and not be too negative. All five of Cunnan's goals are high value, which you like to see if you're us. Sure. But again. People have talked about the secondary scoring. I don't see it. Good good play again away from the puck. Haven't seen it. Leadership qualities. Not to say that he's not a leader, but I haven't seen anything that tells me that he is a leader. So I just – my zero is whoever is watching a different version of Luke Cunning because, like, that person obviously sees something that we don't, and I think they should be giving us that version of Luke Cunning. Or giving the Sharks that version of Luke Cunning and then take the one that hasn't really done anything. I know. Uh, let's get into the quick hits here. Uh, it was another clickbait week. Uh, it seems to be going around. Darren Drager of TSN posted a rumor that the Oilers might be interested in Carlson. You know, and it's like, and I know 30 other teams as well. Uh, but, not only, but not only that, right? Edmonton Oilers might be interested in Eric Carlson. Like, <laughs> like you know how many teams might be interested in him? Yeah, 30 other ones. Like, I, I might be interested in him. Like, you right? know, and I, I don't work for any NHL team. <sighs> I just, I don't know what Edmonton would have to give up to make all those numbers work. And I don't know if if uh, a team that had two EKs on it before did okay. So Well, so I just, not that it, you know, not that it necessarily matters, right? But... You know, the Sharks retain some salary. They've got a lot of LTIR money. You know, maybe you can move a body out. Edmonton can make it work. All right. I mean. I would take Kaylor Yamamoto. 
I'm, oh yeah, I'm, but I'm just thinking, man, would would Edmonton like literally have like the highest price forward and the highest price defenseman? Yes. Whoo! Actually, <laughs> <laughs> just saying. <laughs> makes you makes you think. Yeah, it makes you go. Hmm. Uh, we referenced it earlier, but Pierre LeBron had an article. It quoted Claude Lemieux, Timo Meyer's agent, saying, "We're open minded, we're realistic, and we're waiting for an offer whenever it's going to come." Uh, LeBron saying, "I could be wrong, but I don't think the Sharks sign Timo Meyer. I think this is more likely headed to a trade at some point, given the assets San Jose could net." to help along a retool or rebuild the, my point is it's like, yeah, I, I understand the money aspect could be, uh, you know, coaching, but <clears throat> it's, you could trade Timo Meyer for assets that could help your retool. Well, you already know what Timo Meyer is and pretty solid asset. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, and and I kind of mentioned it earlier. Like, I don't, I don't really. I, I'm not convinced that he's getting traded away. I definitely think again. My my sort of mantra with life is that nothing is impossible. You mm-hmm. know, like I like even if something has half a percent chance of happening, like that's still a chance. You know what I mean? But I just don't. It just I just don't see it. I mean, I know I know it was a different. You know. I know it was a different GM that signed Hurdle to the extension, but again, I don't know that it makes sense to keep one building block and then get rid of another building block unless, as I've said all along, Mike Greer thinks that the Sharks are five-plus years away. And <sighs> and I don't know what he thinks. I personally don't think they're five-plus years away, but I don't know because, again, if you're like— I want to know how many years away he told Hasso it is. Right. And, and, and that's the thing, like, I'll, and I've, again, this is not new information. So if you've heard this before, don't think you're listening to an old episode, but if Meyer and Eric Carlson stay, Mike Greer thinks the Sharks are close or close to being close. If Meyer and Eric Carlson go, Mike Greer thinks the Sharks are nowhere near anything. There you go. God. But and then if he moves, say say four shits and giggles, and I you know right. I I don't like getting into the the hyperbolic you know it could happen type bullshit. But for the giggles, let's say the Sharks move Meyer to EK. That is a sign. Okay, I got four years left on this deal. It ain't happening here. Yep, I 100%. I I need to you know pull the ripcord with Mike and say get me out of here. Then what does that do to like Tomas Hurdle? Well, I was gonna say, and right now, you know, right now Hurdle has the full no move clause, but you know, after year three of the eight year deal, it becomes a modified no trade, and so then it kind of makes you think, okay, well, what's gonna happen there? But I, I, I'm with you. If Meyer goes, then I think it makes it very easy for Carlson to be like, yeah, me next, please. But <laughs> on the flip side of that, and we kind of got into it last week, but I just wonder. Again, I know this is looking to be the Sharks' fourth year in a row of missing the playoffs. Never happened in franchise history. But I wonder if Timo Meyer. again, there's so many considerations. You know what I mean? Everybody just says, get the biggest contract and call it a day. But there's so many considerations, right? You know, how do you feel about the, the organization, the people who are running it, the people who are part of it? You know, money obviously is a factor. The city's a factor. But again, and I, and I mentioned it last week. From an outside perspective, it appears to me that Timo Meyer has a good relationship with Tomas Hurdle and with Eric Carlson. Mm-hmm. Could that be a deciding factor uh-huh. in staying? Yep, I'm telling you. And you brought you brought up uh, fourth it, never before in franchise history they had never before gone three years. Until yeah, last, right. So, right? so, so last year when they missed three years in a row, that was actually a, a franchise record. And so, if they miss again this year, they're just extending the <laughs> franchise record. If they miss, <laughs> well, again, you know, yeah, I know, nothing's impossible. <laughs> Jordan Bennington, St. Louis, was blah blah blah. But <laughs> my no, my point is, uh, well, there's a positive. It's like they set a franchise record last year, and they're poised to break it this year. Hey, you know what? Making records. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> 
Uh, Tuesday's game against the Desert Dogs, and how what could be more apropos, uh, is going to be the 2,000th game for Randy Hahn. And this was, uh, I think it was kind of mentioned on one of the last two games, maybe, uh, and oh my God, whoever, the guy who took over uh, for Brody Brazil during the Vancouver game, ay ay ay, oof. But anywho, uh, the 2000 came for Randy Hahn, so how, how could you not, like the hockey gods lined that one up. Desert Dogs, are you kidding me? So, Maybe. well, and I knew something was coming down the pipe because I was, you know, I have access to uh, some of the, the game photos from, from games. But, you know, that's what game photos are of games. <laughs> Last I looked. But all of a sudden, that, that game against Vancouver, all of a sudden there were like five or six different photos of Randy Hahn. And I'm like, okay. Expect an article from Curtis Pichelka here in the next day or so that's going to have four or five pit photos of Randy Hahn. But I knew something was coming down the pipe because I've seen this movie before. But <laughs> uh, do you have any uh, favorite Hahn moments? Any, any no. favorite call? No? You're not going to uh, do a little, use this opportunity to do use a little Game 7 wank or anything? Or? Um, yeah. I mean, is, is Randy Hahn one of the best NHL play-by-play broadcasters of all time? Yes, absolutely. But am I, you know, am I sitting in my office with the lights off listening to old highlights uh, just to hear him? I'm not. No, no, no. I'm, but I'm just saying, is that, you know, <laughs> was there ever like one that you kind of go, oh, all right, that was funny or that, you know, that was a really good call or something? Um, really? Okay, fine. I'll play your game. So <laughs> something you. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Uh, so, uh, you know, a couple of good calls, like stuff that, you know, stuff that like kind of gets the hair on your arm standing up a little bit is, um, and I don't know, this is kind of an older reference, but, uh, there was a game long time ago against Boston where the sharks ripped off three goals in like the last couple minutes of the third period to win the game after being down two zero. And when Marco Sturm scored the leading goal, like that one kind of gets the hair up off your arms. Um, obviously game seven, I mean, you know, I know everybody talks about, you know, for me, the one that I liked hearing is he's like, uh, you know, I believe he said something like, oh, the Golden Knights are shook or they're shocked or something like that. And the only reason I took that away was because, you know, shook is one of the words that we say all the time. So <laughs> it's more like, yeah, they're shook. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, Puck guy knows what I'm talking about, talking about Marco Sturm. Puck guy knows. Well, I, I mean, I have a few, and you know, that's uh, it's just him having fun with the other guys. Sure. Uh, I remember there was one with um, with Drew Remenda. Uh, there something there was something that had he was trying to illust- illustrate some frustrations. I believe this was a game against Florida last season, and Randy just goes, "You know, you're pulling your hair out if you have any." <laughs> and Remenda's like, "Oh, come on, man." <laughs> like just the the great com- camaraderie and comedy that those two share has just been really fun uh and funny to listen to there's i know there's a couple times with baker there was one particular one <clears throat> excuse me that um brendan Dillon scored a goal i know what you're talking about go ahead and and it was with jamie baker uh as his partner and Dylan scores this goal, and Randy said something along the lines of, boy, he had enough time there to check his nails, something. What He was quoting that Lizzo song. Yeah, good as hell. Yeah. And he's, oh, check his nails and blah, blah, blah. And, and Baker goes, what the hell are you listening to? <laughs> Listen, are you watching the Hallmark Channel? Like, Baker had no idea what the hell was going on. Well, not only that, but I think, like... I, I think the fact that he ripped off a song lyric like just out of nowhere, I think that goes you that goes to show you like what Randy Hahn has in his bag of tricks, you know, oh, just yeah. in terms he of stays like current. you know, finding just but like finding the right thing to say in the right moment, but also you're asking what's something that Randy Hahn has said that really kind of perked you up. But Randy Hahn is also really good at 
letting things breathe. Like if it's a situation where if the cloud, the crowd is buzzing or they're chanting or something is going on, you know, something is really edgy on ice. Randy Hahn knows when to lay out. And sometimes in, in any, you know, broadcasting and all that kind of stuff, sometimes the best thing that you say is nothing. Exactly. Uh, what, and I'd say two more that off the top of my head and we'll move on. But there was one <laughs> again, Baker was on the call with them and the ref had an open mic and <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking the about. Penalty and he's three fucking times, three fucking times. Get in there. Yeah. And, and Randy goes, you know, says something he goes, you know, kind of nudges Baker a little bit and says, you know, well, did you think that was the right call? And, and Baker's like, well, I mean, he did do it three times. <laughs> well, <laughs> Just, and the way they handle some of those kind of things, where they, you know, they hear something get out over the the broadcast that they know isn't supposed to, they, you know, they they don't take themselves too seriously, which well, I really and, appreciate. Well, similar similar to what you're talking about, I know there was another time where, um, same kind of thing, you know, a hot mic picked up somebody swearing and and saying the f word. And and it Are was you kind fucking of, kidding me. And no, it, it wasn't that, but it was like, you know, somebody said the f word on a hot mic, and like there was like a, a little bit of a lull, a couple seconds, and Randy is like, so uh, Brett, um, do you care to repeat what so and so said? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but and then probably one of my oldest ones uh, that I ever <laughs> just had a, a kick with. I want to say this was uh, the Sharks faced the Colorado Avalanche, I believe, in 02 during the playoffs. You said Colorado? Yeah. In yeah, in the playoffs. I want to say like round two, round three. Uh, no, no, they no played, 04, 04, right? 04, they played in the second round. There you go. So I'm, uh, I'm chilling out in this uh, bar in San Mateo. And it's part, it's huge place. Huge. 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 It has like, like, what was it? Two 10 foot screens and a 12 foot screen. Sure. It's, you know, huge. And next to it was a skating rink. Right. So we're watching the game and we're hanging out. We're chilling in the bar area and chief, some, you know, some chief strolls in rocking uh, an avalanche cap. And he sits like in the, one of the pub height tables within arm's reach and uh, sitting there having our drinks, having our snacks. And I, you know, I, I say, so are you, you know, are you a transplant? Are you from here? What's, you know, what, what's with the, the, av, the abs hat? And he goes, no, I'm from Colorado. I'm actually visiting um, or I'm, I'm in on business, but I knew this was, you know, I, I was told that this was like a cool place and oh, oh okay, cool. No problem. And he asked, you know, some other, oh, there's some cool other stuff around here to check out because I got a couple more days, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I had a nice discussion. And a little bit later in the game, all of a sudden you hear, you know, Nolan streaking up the left side boards and we are having an earthquake. And I was, and it, I'm like, did I hear him correctly? And then all of a sudden where we were at starts moving. You can feel it. You start seeing some of the lights. It wasn't real bad. Like, I don't think it was anything over four, but it was enough for Colorado avalanche guy to drop cash on the bar top to cover his tab and hightail it out of there. <laughs> so, so it's, I love the call, but it was just because of the moment that it happened with it. So that was, uh, so it's funny that you bring that up. So I'm looking right now. So that happened. That was game. That was game six of the first round in 2002, actually. Oh, okay. So it was 2002. Okay. Yeah. And, and the reason why I know that is because, okay, now obviously this is going to hyper focus on the age difference between AJ and I, <laughs> AJ, AJ was at a bar. I was going to first grade the next day, whatever. <laughs> So in my first grade class the next day, we, you know, as you do when you're a small child in school, as you read, write, do all that kind of bullshit. And so the teacher says, okay, class, we're going to write about, you know, what we were doing during the earthquake and how we felt and blah, 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 all that crap. And literally first grade in my thing, I wrote, I was watching the San Jose Sharks game and there was an earthquake and that the Sharks lost. And it was like my whole, you know, first grade 
writing response thing was about the earthquake <laughs> during the Sharks game, you know? So <laughs> I remember that being, you know, despite being seven years old, like I remember that, you know what I mean? Oh, dude, absolutely. Um, let's move on. Uh, a couple of quick Christmas fun with, with Chris, that? with, yeah, I know with, uh, okay. Hanukkah, whatever you prefer, Kwanzaa, it's all good. Whatever you celebrate, do you, but let's have some holiday fun. What Jersey would you be Jack to find under the tree? Dude, the fucking coyotes purple jersey. <laughs> what if it was purple? Mm. I, I, you know, for me, it might be that uh, Colorado re- reverse retro 1.0, that Nordiques. Sure. You know, I, and remember when we say, you know, this is like the one jersey that you'd want under the tree, of course, we, we're talking MIC, right? <laughs> sure. So, I think so, it goes without saying, but yeah. yeah. Okay. So, but give me a player or do you want blank? You know, I, as I've gotten older, I've sort of become, I've sort of turned into blank Jersey guy. Okay. See, I think I'd probably, you know, want to go McKinnon or something. But, safe pick. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Relatively safe. But, and, uh, and we can ask the, the, the chat, the live chat now, um, you know, what would be the Jersey for you that you'd just be like, Oh, that's, you know, that's the one you don't have to pay for it. Santa delivers it. And it's the one thing that would just get you super hyped. Uh, you know, none of this fucking, you know, <laughs> don't be like, I want the Jersey Nabby was wearing when he scored the goal. Like it doesn't have Why to not, be, though? well, okay, but come on, it's gotta no, be, a I get loose, what you're saying. you know, like don't get nuts. You know, <laughs> the, the Jersey that Ray Bork was wearing when he finally got to lift the cup. None of this shit. The one that, uh, you know, Gordy Howe when he was stretched out, or cr- none of this shit. The one that Barkley Goodrow wore during game seven. Oh, dude. The, the <laughs> one the one that Pavelski was wearing when he got laid out and his eye has blood all over it. Like, oh, my God. You know? So it's like, let's just call it what it is. Just say, what would be your one? And then the other one, what would be the jersey that you would be like, and I have a new piece of toilet paper? Uh, the Sharks' new home jersey. Oh, okay. I mean, do you? I think no. You know what? I think the jersey by its the Sharks' new home jersey by itself is fine. The kit, I'm not into. Okay. Uh, you know, for me, I think it's just about like anything that Nashville's ever put out, <laughs> or for the Flyers. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say any. You know what it is for me? Anything since 2007 that Nashville has done. Sure. Hey, Phipps, Phipps said that he wants Ooh. a, Tol- a Tolvin and Sharks reverse retro. Nice. 2.0, nice. I'm assuming. Yeah, of course. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> the one. Uh, and I do like that at it, it first with McAniemi, for, just to go back to that for a second, that McAniemi, it was immediately thought, or at least most people were pronouncing it like E2 McAniemi. It's E2, right? Well, from what I've seen, it's like A2. Oh, okay. But either way, it's like, how soon does it become a thing between you and I where it's like, two? Hey, uh, two? <laughs> that's not where I thought you were this going. This is going to replace who? With, hey, two? <laughs> I thought you were going to get real. I thought you were going to get real classical on us and start quoting Shakespeare. Oh, yeah. <laughs> et tu, Brute? Et tu? Et tu, Brute? <laughs> All right. Let's go on to the NHL. Um, people, I don't know why. People are losing their shit on different platforms that Ovechkin is scoring empty net goals on his Gretzky chase. Are, are you kidding? Honestly, again, we were talking about non-stories a few minutes ago. Well, dude, this is that's what I'm saying. Non-story. I'm like, that's what you're going to fucking complain about? Is, oh, like, did Gretzky not also score empty net goals? Like, Dude, the- literally, when I'm going to... When he scored 50 and 39 that everybody loves to talk about, the 50th goal was in an empty netter. (laughs) See? So I think our message for those that are talking about Ovi and and this chase, uh, I think we have like three words for you. Oh, boo, fucking (laughs) who? There you go. Nice. (laughs) I mean, geez. I was trying to, you know, I'm trying to see, I want to... Because so hockey hockey reference they have quite an astounding package of stats. I want to see if I can find how many of Gretzky's 894 goals were empty netters. Oh, somebody it was like 70 something. I thought. Yeah, which is, you know, that's a huge percentage if that is the number. You know. Yeah. So 
and Marty T coming over the ropes. The way goalies were back then, lots of Gretzky goals were basically <laughs> empty nets. Nice. True, a truer statement has never been spoken. <laughs> Speaking of back in the day, on this date, 30 years ago today, Gary Bettman was elected the first yeah, right. NHL commissioner. And we have yet to see anybody secede him. I don't know why that is, but... Hey, you, okay, you know what? <laughs> Gary! <laughs> the... <laughs> the there's going to be a lot of people who have a lot to say about that, right? Uh, about but, 30 years? Yes. All right. But the one thing that you the one thing that you cannot dispute and I know people are going to say that he hates Canada and that's fine, maybe that's true. But the one thing who that doesn't? you cannot the one thing you <laughs> cannot dispute is that the NHL has seen an unprecedented amount of growth under his tenure. It's become a it's become a billion dollar league. Um it, billion dollar sorry multi-billion dollar per year league um they've added teams in like 12 markets uh on big tv deals outdoor games international games all kinds of stuff great brand deals for the league like i know there's a lot of negative things you can say and deservedly so 100 percent. but to deny the unprecedented growth that he's overseen i think is you know, downplaying the good because you want to be a whiner about the bad. No, I, and I, I can understand not, not that. You, not no, you, no, 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 no. Just I generally it. speaking. Yeah, no, no, no. But but I think, it, you know, contextually, though, the 90s saw expansion in, like, all the leagues. Sure. Right? You know, the, like, in 1992, to the best of my knowledge, Colorado Rockies, Florida Marlins didn't exist. Car- Carolina Panthers, uh, Jacksonville Jaguars didn't exist. So there's, there's, you know, there's been expansion over, over the hall. So, I mean, the other thing being is that the NHL has a uh, bit of a reputation as being a copycat league. Sure. You know, it'd be nice to see them uh, blaze a trail once in a while, but you can't argue really too much with the results and where we're at, you know, barring a, a couple lockouts here and there, but. Yeah. And I mean, considering that hockey is a niche sport, I think the NHL does very well for itself. All right, then. And also... <laughs> Aside from I, the whole ESPN thing. <laughs> right. And I and I fact-checked myself a couple of things. So when, when Jerry, when he became the... And yes, I did that on purpose. When he became the commissioner... Uh, <laughs> the, NHL, the NHL had 24 teams. So he's seen eight added. Um, but he's expanded into... Or I should say he's overseen the expansion into a lot of really critical markets for the NHL. I mean, you know... Uh, Tampa, Florida, the the Nevada and Arizona desert, Seattle. Well, but like these are big television markets for the NHL. Yes, but it's again to be fair to try to you know a little bit of two sides of the coin on this. Eight teams added. Okay. Uh, but we've also seen how many relocations. You know, yeah, but that's not, but that's on the owner. That's not on him. Okay. You know, it, it, it's not it, it's not Bettman's fault if the Quebec Nordiques are bleeding money every year. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, maybe, what, could more have been done to sh- give success in Atlanta? Sure, and that's fair. Yeah. So and and also, so I fact checked one more thing. So, uh, um, so six and a quarter percent of Wayne Gretzky's career NHL goals were empty netters. Six and a quarter percent. Where's Ovi at then? Ovi is at, I'm going to tell you right now, when we do some quick math here on the fly, (laughs) Ovi is at six and a half percent. Oh, see, give me a break. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) To reiterate, (laughs) who fucking who? Although worth mentioning, and we'll see, Ovechkin is on pace to have more total empty netters than Gretzky, but percentage of total goals being empty netters is very close. Yeah. You know, less than a half a percent. Yeah. Ian saying, uh, because Bettman made the owners a boatload of money and turned a million dollar business into a hundred billion dollar business. So yeah, there you go. Hey, look, what do we say? Cash is king. Cash is king. And Hey, anybody that gives myself and jerk credentials to a national event, (laughs) more, you know, more power to you. Jerry. Uh, (laughs) Jerry. Ooh, Barracuda. Okay. 
So time for your coup to cuddle. Uh, another team that played two games this week. Uh, the the Firebirds came in and completely throttled the Cuda on Top Gun night. See what I did there? Throttled Top Gun. Arendelle yanked after giving up five in the first. This was not a fun game, at least not if you were a Barracuda fan. But the Barracuda did turn it around, oh, about an hour or so ago in a 3-1 victory. What the hell was the final in that uh, Firebirds game, like 8-5 to five or something? It was a shit show. They were down 5-1 I... to one at one point. Yeah, I don't think it was that. I I hate to say it, but I don't think it was that close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe it was eight to three, something like that. I'm sure, uh, like Ian will, will come in here. But eight, this, yeah, eight to three. So any, anyway, but this being my point, though, Aaron Dell gets pulled in that one, and then tonight is the first star. <laughs> it just goes to show you, man. It's a goddamn roller coaster up in here. Uh, last I looked, uh, and I might be wrong. <laughs> Somebody help me here. But where are we at with the standings? Let's pull this stuff up for, uh, I apologize. I should have been ready for this. But the last time I looked, they are fifth in the Pacific right now. Woof. I mean, better than sixth or <laughs> 13, 10, and one, six, four, or I'm sorry, six and four over their last 10. Uh, boy, their goal differential isn't horrible. It's dash five right now. Need to be a little bit ho- uh, better at home, I would say, right now. But last time I looked, the leaders uh, going into tonight's game, your leaders and goals were Bordalo with 11. Assists, you had a tie with Agazino and Merkley at 14. And overall points, Agazino at 21. Makes you wonder if someone's going to bang down that door. And our uh, prospect of the week, Alex Young. Nine goals and nine assists in 18 games with Colgate University. A school, I'm sure, that four out of five dentists recommend. I thought you were going to mention, Sa- uh, I know he's not on the Barracuda anymore, but I thought you were going to mention Sasha Chemileski, who was selected to the KHL All-Star Game this weekend. Oh, nice call-out. Oh, see, maybe we need to do that, have to do that here for CUDA, too, so we each get a call-out. Shout-out. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Shout-out. All right, uh, your favorite time and mine is time for the Tweet of... The week. I got to get the audio thing back in here. It's it's fun to do it just once a show. All right. We're playing Arizona this week. Swift Shark 13. Don't, <laughs> don't think we forgot about you, dog. You wrote, if when we lose to Arizona, I will donate $50 to the podcast. Uh, we're holding you to that. Please do it via Venmo when that comes. So obviously we'll be revisiting this next Sunday, but I'm just telling you, we got you, boo. We, you know, don't hold out on us, buddy. If it happens, receipts <laughs> that we got them. Uh, we had a giveaway, right? Last week, did something happen? Yeah, I don't even we, remember what the hell the what did I tell? Was it? It was we hurdle, did have power a play time the, on ice or something. Uh, that's exactly what it was. Our fourth week in a row of doing our giveaway. I'm sorry. Our fifth week in a row of doing a giveaway, but our fourth week in a row of having a winner. <laughs> <laughs> Solid call out. So, so how do you want to do this? Do you want to like give a refresher? You just want to jump right in and say who won? Like, uh, no, we can do the refresher. So, last week's question closest without going over, uh, caveat. yeah, without going over hurdles, power play, time on ice over the course of the two games that the Sharks played this week. Now, again, not the easiest thing to get into because, like, versus Toronto, they never even got a penalty. Or, I'm sorry, they were, they were never on the power play. And so you just never know how that shit's going to go. So, <clears throat> what was the uh, what was the uh, time that Hurdle spent over these two games on the power play? Hurdle spent, and you know what? I Because of what you were talking about, how the power play is seemingly different, and we broke it down last week, it's seemingly different game to game. Mm-hmm. So, after seeing what it was the first game against the Vancouver <laughs> Canucks, I was like, man, like, where, where are we going to go from here, you know? <laughs> um, so, Hurdle spent this week, two games, Anaheim and Vancouver, not in that order, nine minutes and 31 seconds on the power play. And what was the guess that was closest without going over? So, fun fact, nobody went over. Oh, no is, shit. Oh, all right. Yes. So, finally, they're getting used to playing the $1. Fun fact number two, somebody said, they sent me an email, 
The and one they second? Said, no, they said zero minutes, zero seconds. Ah, same, same. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I see you. I see you. Right. The big winner. And and they were quite far off from the actual time, but because they were closest. Oh. With seven minutes and 14 seconds. Again, far off, but they, they were, were like 2.15, right? Yeah. Gavin Goodrich. Who first that? time, First time enterer. First time winner. Whoa. Nice. And I and I have confirmed with them they have chosen the retro lunchbox, so now we can call this lunchbox 3.0. Nice. <laughs> and they have sent me their address. They are in the contiguous 48 states. Oh, dude, see, you did everything right there, pal. Yep, you Gavin, did... shout out. You're making AJ's life very easy. <clears throat> oh, dude, love it. Love it. Huge. Huge. <laughs> All right, so that brings us to this bad boy right here. The, the the LeBanc piggy bank. It should be noted, LeBanc on a little bit of a tear recently, getting his snipe on, if you will. Yep. Sure. So the, uh, and hey, you know what? There's a little hole right here to, you know, once you fill it up, if you need to uh, empty the, the bad boy out, but letting you know that um, maybe I'll put something in here before I send it off. I'm just saying. Hey, now. How are we going to do this? How are we going to do it? All right. So we have uh, Arizona. Oh, L.A., but the problem is Calgary next week is a uh, Pucknologist takeover. Okay. So it's one of those things that, you know, obviously we, you'll be uh, sitting there with your uh, green visor on running the numbers. <laughs> I'll bust out my abacus. Right? Um, I don't know. What do we want to do? What what sounds um, intriguing? Okay. I mean, we've done power play time on ice. Did Have we done so shots on goal for Timo Meyer? So here, so I'll walk through what we've done. So we did save percentage. So we covered the goalies. Oh, nice. We've done ice time for Eric Carlson. Mm -hmm. We've done shots on goal for the whole team. And we've done power play ice time for Tomas Hurdle. So we've done, in some form, we've done uh, shots on goal and ice time. I And I saw someone in the chat, and at first I was like, oh, that's kind of goofy. But then I'm starting to think that maybe there's something there. <laughs> kind of and, letting and, it marinate a little bit? Yeah, and if you're not into it, whatever. I'd, ultimately, whatever works, works. Somebody said that this week's contest should be how many pim and Molasses got it, how many PIMs for Luke Cunning? <sighs> See, the, the, the thing with that, though, is I feel like we're going to get a, like a lot of four, a lot of six. Sure, and th it, yeah, that you know, opens it up to a tie. Yeah, it's going to be like a log jam. Like we need something that is definitely uh, a, a bit more difficult to predict and a, okay. more of a wild card number. Um, what if, or but okay, <coughs> follow up. Does it have to be a number? Okay, lay it on me. What are you thinking? I mean, again, I think it still opens it up to a tie, right? But mm -hmm. maybe it's like what you could say. What will be the most commonly called penalty against the sharks <laughs> like like i think the sharks will get dinged for hooking the most oh that's what i would probably go with i mean that seems to be the <laughs> the call du jour but then again it's the shark so it could be delay of game sure uh yeah i think that's a little too obtuse sure um I'm i think like i like shots on goal for timo meyer but my only glitch with that is we did shots on goal so recently yeah, well, no, dude. I, I, I mean, you want to talk about one that I, that I just came up with on the top of my head, and I'm like, oh my god, this was, this would be such an asshole move. So, sure. of course, I'm inclined to pull it off. Yep. But I'm like closest without going over the tweet that comes from Curtis Pichelka letting everybody know that Matt Nieto is activated. Dude, that could be three days from now. That could be three weeks from now. <laughs> the only it's thing with that is a... there's no guarantee we have a winner. Exactly. It's such a dick move. Um, so, <sighs> man. Uh... It's a toughie. It is. Um, what do you think about uh, shots allowed over the three games? So that's a hmm. that's a team one. That is a team one, but again, you know, last week or I'm sorry, two weeks ago was shots four. So again, are we getting? Okay, you so know, this is yeah. No, I I still but feel I mean, like are we are we still in the same 
neighborhood. Like, I almost wonder, like, hmm. I almost, if we wanted to be really, like, if we really want to stick it, like, team closest without going over in these next three games, who are they playing? They're playing, what is it, Arizona, Calgary, and LA. LA. Closest without going over, team shooting percentage. Oh, fuck, dude. Hell yeah. Okay, and? Hell yeah. In the name, in dude, the name Scott of, Harrison is 20. <laughs> and so just for, and again, just to really kind of settle everybody down and so we know what's what, the Sharks scored, as AJ mentioned, the Sharks scored 11 goals this week, and they had... Let's see here. We'll do some quick math. They had, oh, God, 67 shots on goal. So if you're keeping score at home, that is a 16, and we'll do it to the round to two places. That's a 16.41 shooting percentage. Hold on. How are you, how are you coming up with this? Because it's like... Uh... Total, total goals divided by total shots times 100. Oh, boy. I hope everybody understands this because I, well, <laughs> I was almost okay. See, but I think it could have been interpreted a different way there where they're just going to add up all of the shooting. Pers- you know, it's like Gadjevich 50, Meyer oh, 40, see. Sturm 33. You, you know what I mean? No, the, okay. No. So the team shooting percentage. So, and you, and I'll, you know, I you, feel like I'll, we need to come up with something different. I don't know. Ian likes it. And you know, <laughs> Oh, Oh, okay, Desert Dog mentions. See, but then but that's but here's just the for thing. the one game, though. Well, here a- and it also requires game. me listening. Right, it's for the <laughs> one game. It requires us to listen. Yeah, and and who knows if I miss one, then that yeah, then it, it turns then into a whole d- controversy. Yeah, it's controversy. There's debate. It's a whole thing that I don't want to get into. I just want to be able to log into a website and say, "Up oh, there it is." So, oh. Oof. I mean, we could fa- team face-off percentage. Like... Yeah, but again, that's one of those ones where it's just, I don't know. I See, I really like shots on goal or shots against or uh, uh, time on ice, I like, like, you know, or goals against average. Mm-hmm. Those, I, I, uh, okay, what did we do for the uh, the goalie one? Was it goals against average or save percentage? Uh, for the goalie one, save percentage was the main contest, and then goals against average was the tiebreaker. Yeah, uh, you want to invert it? Mm. I don't know. It's just I don't know. It's not. <laughs> it's not fun when it's not it's fun. Like, it's not funny. It's the same. Like I don't know. Like I want to. Like we've done something different every week. I want to keep doing something different. You know what I mean? Uh, but again, but ultimately, I don't. Ultimately, I don't really care, but I think it would be kind of fun to keep people on their toes a little bit, you know? It's just, man, I really don't want to have to get into tiebreakers. Okay. Oh, no, I, hmm. What about something with hits? Nah. Or blocks, or? Well, it's, see, blocks, again, I think that's going to be, it's, it's going to be, you know, Bonino. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be like the same three guys. That's uh, fine. Yeah, no, nah, because again, it's going to be one of those things where you, it's going to turn into a whole uh, tiebreaker, spin the wheel kind of a thing. Um, see, I almost want to. Uh, what what was uh, God? What's his name again? Hurdle. <laughs> it was power play time on ice. Yeah. Um, let's let's go with. Uh, you thinking shorthanded time on ice? Yeah, I'm thinking uh, EK65. Oh no, because <laughs> he plays on the power play. He doesn't play shorthanded. Um, I definitely think, though, for shorthanded time on ice, I think it would be smart to do a defenseman. Maybe Vlasic. Shh, don't tell people that. Why? Because <laughs> the people will guess that. All right. Uh, well, yeah, it's numbers. Um, so what are we doing then? It's going to be... Uh, total total shorthanded time on ice. Total shorthanded time on ice over those three games. Oh, man. Okay. For, Marty- for Vlasic. Marty Tease is kind of interesting, actually. Is it a spicy meatball? Look at everybody who gets a point this week. Add their jersey numbers together and guess the number. Oh, that's kind. 
that's kind of like a jelly beans in the jar one. Yeah, I was gonna say, dude, that takes that takes like way too much effort. Like we want this to be somewhat, you know, like you don't really have to put that much thought into it. I like where your head's at though. <laughs> we might need to do something like that uh in a different way. But no, for the LeBanc piggy bank, let's just do shorthanded time on ice, closest without going over. You know, you're gonna add up all three games. Uh Arizona, L.A., Calgary next Sunday. Without going over, what is the combined shorthanded time on ice that Mark Edward Vlasic gets? There it is. So there you go. And just so, just so everybody's on the same or kind of gets a gets a baseline here. So this past week on the penalty kill, Vlasic had do some quick math here. Vlasic had let's see. Six minutes and 37 seconds of penalty kill time in two games. So that kind of gives you a baseline where to go. And also the two contests before this one, because we had four games, we gave the first one as a freebie. There's only three games this week, so no freebies. No freebies. And you got to get it in. When when do they play Arizona? Is that Tuesday? Tuesday. So that would be, so what, Tuesday by... Puck drop. Yeah, Tuesday by puck drop, which is, you know, it's a moving target with these puck drops. You never really know. But, <laughs> it should be like 737, but we'll say 730. Uh, seven, 737 on Tuesday night, Pacific time. Yeah. So there you go. Send your guesses, as always, to Hockey Jerk 10. That's 10, all one word. So Hockey Jerk 10 at gmail.com with your answer. And also, if anybody cares, we're up to one Twitter winner and three email winners. So, Oops. if you if you are uh, if you're somebody who likes to play the odds, email your answer to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh. If you like to be risky, DM your answer to me on Twitter. And if you don't care, do either one. All right. So there you go. That's the details for this week's contest. Uh, good luck, everybody. Coming up this week, uh, it's another light one, or I should say relatively light, because as I mentioned, they're off for three days, then they host the Desert Dogs. Uh, this is going to be 2,000th game for Randy Hahn, so I'm sure there'll be uh, a lot of fun. I hope they like break out some good clips and have fun with it. Um, but after another three days off, the Sharks head to LA to face the Kings, and then come back to ho- or uh, I'm sorry, come back to SAP to host the Flames. Uh, the night after, which means you're... What are they doing? Ah, oh, crap. It's one of those, a Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize. All right, so either way, the Sharks play the Flames next Sunday, which means it's time for another Pucknologist takeover. Boo. Oh, dude, always our favorites. Fuck. So that means we're not going to be on until like 9.30-ish. Yeah, so don't forget to set your DVR. <laughs> Apologies to our affiliates. 9.30-ish uh, for next week's podcast. Yeah. My fiance is going to love that. <laughs> this is one of three times this season the Sharks are going to face the same team back-to-back. Can we get more of that, please? Wasn't that like the best thing about the bubble, and they said that they were going to like do that, and then they really haven't? Kind of... <laughs> what was it? Like, uh, the Sharks, they, they played Vancouver twice at home like Mm -hmm. you know they're two the two they play they hosted vancouver played four games away and then came back and played vancouver (laughs) like in that way it was a really weird one and then there was wasn't there something with anaheim yeah where they played anaheim on a tuesday then anaheim went up to edmonton while the sharks hosted florida and then anaheim came back that saturday that's oh my god who's putting this shit together. Make it make sense. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, remember, after all of those games, to check out our post-game cast after dark. We got Puck Guy, Ian, Landy, Dana. They're all going to be on there. So uh, <laughs> Michael calling it, I guess you use the words DVR. What's that, old man? <laughs> <laughs> What's your uh, final words for the week? Final words for the week. So we've already got two emails in for this week's oh, contest, piggy bank it. contest. And I think, so as I said, um, 
the the closest without going over for this past week was almost three minutes under the total. So I'm not going to give anything away, but we're seeing some higher guesses so far. Hey. You know, but we're but we're you know we're still counting all the numbers. Um, you know, <laughs> we're, we're not there, there yet. yet. Yeah. Uh, and then number two, and I'm kind of disappointed in myself for only realizing this today, but um, so if you're not familiar, prior to the pandemic, and then obviously this year. Um, USA Hockey Women's Team and Can- and Hockey Canada Women's Team have played in what's called a they call it the rivalry series, and so they kind of go town to town and play an exhibition game against each other and do the whole thing. And so, just randomly, I was kind of surfing around on the internet, and it occurred to me that <clears throat> it occurred to me that that uh, the next game in the rivalry series is at the arena of the Henderson Silver Knights on Thursday. So I'm going to be there. Nice. And I don't. Who do you, you plan know, to give the jerk bump to? Um, I don't know. There's a couple people I'm eyeing. I mean, Marie Fleet Plan is the obvious one, but I don't know that she needs it. She's just so good on her own. Um, but I'm excited. You know, they, you know, USA and Canada women's hockey. They did an exhibition game at the Tank like five years ago, which was a bunch of fun. And so I'm excited to get to see it again. You know. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's my final thought. Not sharks related. What does that tell you? <laughs> That it was a slow week. And yet, somehow, 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> make it make sense. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I think that's probably my famous last words. Make it make sense. I don't know. I'm just... Uh, end the Pucknologist takeovers. Unless the game starts at, like, 2 o'clock local time. Then I'm all for it. Right. <laughs> That's it. Remember to click like if you enjoyed this video. Click subscribe if you did not. If you're watching this on replay, have some things to say. Leave it in the comments section. Let us know. Ian loves the interaction and get in there and just and just bat it all around. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can follow us on our social media. And if you listen to the podcast on something like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, whatever, help us out. Hit the subscribe. Leave a review if possible. I haven't seen any new reviews on Apple Podcasts. Come on, man. I'm not giving away a jersey unless I see a couple more, uh, like, five <laughs> stars. Dude, come on, man. And remember, as always, you can find everything on tealtownusa.com. And those donations that keep the cast commercial-free so we don't have to put the brakes on the show. Again, you can always hit us up on Venmo if you enjoy the content at Teal Town USA because nobody carries our water except the viewers. If you want to join the Discord party room, hit up Hockey Jerk. He knows. He, he has the keys to all. Accurate. But, yeah. Um, all right. The Arizona, I mean, is Arizona just going to be like, it, like, is that going to be an entertaining game for us? Are they going to be confused because they're going to see 5,000 people in the stands and go, wait, I thought we were on the road. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think it's going to... I hate to say it, but I think it's going to be a trap game. Uh, But doesn't that mean 50 bucks coming our way? Technically true. Oh! (laughs) There it is. Enshrined. (laughs) Oh, dude. It should be in the Louvre. So we thank you so much, as always, for listening, for hanging out with us on your Sunday night to end everything. Is that... uh, Fish Chargers game, is that already put to bed? I have no idea. Oh, okay. Uh, can we can we take just five seconds and just acknowledge uh, Big Cock Brock? I, you know what? I was <laughs> I thought that when I was watching the game today. I was like, I don't know if that's an appropriate nickname, but I dig it. Oh, dude. Well, we're, we can say that it's being spelled K-A-H-K. There you go, yeah. Bay Area Unite, as they say. Hell yeah. <laughs> Dude, Brady, you could see on that last one, Brady was just like, why did I unretire? Dude, he was crying all day. <laughs> Literally from the first drive, he was crying. Dude, why did I unretire? You got, you just got it handed to you by a kid who wasn't, what was what, five days old when you played your first game? <laughs> <laughs> your first NHL or NFL start, and this kid was five days old? Oh, dude. Big cock, Brock. I can't wait to see if they can just stay healthy. Yeah. I'm hoping uh, everything is... Debo! Debo! <laughs> <laughs> well, everything, everything is cool with him. But uh, yeah, we just had to get our little knock in there because... Uh, okay, Chargers won. Because I, I hate Tom Brady. 
I don't <laughs> care that he's local. I hate Tom Brady. There you have it. Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody you hate? Um, no. All right. Well, at least not publicly. <laughs> All right. So we're tapping out, and I'm going to have to ask the question one more time, please. Lynn Blom. What would you say you do here? <laughs>